Hey, a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. Pro Joe, and this is going to be a Philadelphia Flyers weekly recap slash preview to this week's games as we're going to get right into it. But please, before we do, check out if you're into the minor league team, the Lehigh Valley Fan, as my weekly recap slash preview to this week's games against the Devils, two games against the Devils with a game against Hershey in the middle there, and my series preview after my series recap that I did last night against the Braves. That I did last night, yes, for um for against the Braves series for the Phillies, as well as a preview to the Mets series if you're also into baseball. But when it comes to the Philadelphia Flyers, this is by far the saddest of the videos I have to do for the day um, because it's on our Flyers where the Phillies and Phantoms have been a lot more positive. Um, when it comes to recapping the last week for the Flyers, they were able to win a game they really didn't even deserve to win, 4-3 to three in final in OT. That they were able to come back after going down three to nothing against the downtrodden Buffalo Sabers, um, and then we obviously the next day after winning that game, we were able to come back on goals by Kevin Hayes, Giroux, who's really been a carrying weight for this team this year. Anybody that insults Giroux, you're wrong. Um, he's a guy that's really been doing good. Um, all the time. He's not going to get that 102-point season anymore, but that's not really ever who he was. He exploded at that before. He's always been a good 80-point guy, just does really well in the face-off dot, does really well for your team, and he's definitely been a good captain. And also, we got to remember, we don't know what cats say behind closed doors compared to what they say in the media, but he's been a little bit more critical, and I really like that. Um, after saying in a video a week or some change ago now that I thought he was too timid after a game a week or some change ago. So I think he's doing the right things on the ice, and it seems like he's starting to say all the right things off the ice. And again, we don't know what they say behind closed doors. But they were able to pull that out on a Provorov OT winner assisted by Konechny. Um, this was a game that they should have been able to play it a lot better. They won 4-3 against the Buffalo Sabres. And then they really have to play teams that are inferior to them better, and they just haven't done that because they lost 6-1 to one in the next game on Wednesday, which is just inexcusable. You have two 6-1 to one losses, one in January and now one at the end of March to round out the month in a terrible fashion against the Buffalo Sabres. There's no excuse. Nobody looked good in that game, Roy. There's no positives to take out of that 6-1 to one loss. That's a game you just chuck away and set on fire and just never um, think about it in, except for in terms of learning, growing, and maturing from it. But don't get caught up in all that crap because that was pretty much the month of March for the Philadelphia Flyers. Hell, that week was terrible for them looking in a game that they barely squeaked out against the Sabres when you should be able to, with the talent you see just pure on paper, roster level talent you see in this Flyers team, against the Sabres you should be able to win without squeaking out a victory against the Buffalo Sabres. Then you get torched again for the second time. Yes, the second time you lose 6-1 to to the Sabres of all people. And then you come in on Saturday, and somehow this team's always been inexplicable like this when they're in struggles play great teams much better and then just suck against terrible opponents like the Sabres. They look good against the Islanders. They outshot them 32-24. to Carter Hart looked brilliant with his glove. They had bad turnovers still in this game. you got to limit those. you got to be able to get to the neutrals, through the neutral zone a little bit better consistently. But like Borchek said in his quote, excuse me, you don't play, most teams don't play a full steady 60, paraphrasing what he said. You just have to be able to come out and play the better game. And that's what they really did in this game. Hart looked like the Carter Hart again. The, and the old Carter Hart again, which was great to see. And that is very efficient to see heading into this week. Of course, you want to see Hart back on point. I think giving him a week off was brilliant by the Flyers to be able to just let him get back in the right headspace and in the zone again. And it seems like that what he that's what he was able to do. They were going to his glove side, which he's been cold against this year. And he looked absolutely money and brilliant with the glove in that game as well. But the Flyers looked very good in that game. They got to a shootout on the same night, oddly enough, their uh, minor league affiliate Phantoms got to a shootout, but then just were not able to get it done in the shootout. Uh, the Flyers obviously suck in shootouts. It prevailed in this, but at least they were able to get a point out of this game. This is the only game that is actually positive to talk about for the week, because winning against a, a one-goal game, we have to come back and win 4-3 against the Sabres is not a positive win. This was a positive loss where even looking at the Twitter sphere and the Facebook sphere, people didn't even seem mad about this loss just because the Flyers played a better, more concise game, more together game. They have to limit the turnover still going into this week's game. That's all they uh, really were struggle bunnying with in that game. 
But then you had Carter Hart come up big like we've seen in the past and really perform like the Carter Hart we know he can be in this game. And that was fantastic to see. So that was the last week, really only one good positive game in this in that week. And then we had the Sabres games, which were just not good. They won 4-3, to three, squeaked it out, shouldn't have had to win in that type of fashion, got torched again 6-1 to one for the second time this season, and then lost 3-2 to two to the Islanders in a shootout. But that game, there was a lot of positives to move on for Morin this past week. Uh, he might have been one of the only Padres still being physical and all that aggressive, bringing that brute force that the Flyers really need to their defense and looking good thus far in this game. Tanner Lozinski looked really good in his debut on Saturday, I thought, in a little over eight minutes and change of ice time, and got some PK time as well. So that shows AV knows the type of player he's. He's good on the faceoff dot. He had a 50% in the faceoff dot in that game already in his first game. That's hard to do, and he looked very good in that game, looked very efficient. And looked very good in that game for Tanner Luzinski as well. I thought he looked very good in his debut as sorry as the co-host Kyla uh, joined us in the background. But um, this week we're going to preview this week's game. As unfortunately for the Boston Bruins who the Flyers have as three out of their four opponents this week. Um, two back-to-back home and home. This Tonight's game is in the TD Garden and tomorrow's in the Wells Fargo Center. They play the New York Islanders on Thursday, the Bruins again on Saturday, and then the Buffalo Sabres at home on Sunday. So the Bruins, unfortunately, have, have um, Yaroslav Halak hit the Kovalev as we wish him well and pray for him. This is a virus that nobody wants to mess around with. We wish him the best. I hope he gets the best as soon as possible. And then um, Tuka Reyes just started skating. So now they have Jeremy Swayman, who has been absolutely torching it um, in the AHL um, for the Providence Bruins, along with Dan Vlador, who has looked very good in the AHL, is a reason why the fans were able to grab McIntyre in the AHL because the Bruins are ready to move on from one of the AHL's better goaltenders and to let Vlador play down there as well as Swayman that they saw coming up. And Swayman's absolutely torching uh, the AHL this season. In nine games, he has a 189 goals against and a 933 save percentage, where Vladar as well looked good down there, but has looked very good in his three games this far. 2-1, 2-0-3, and a 929, a very good position league goaltender for Vladar. At 6-5, a big boy that just gets it done, gets in good position, and is really good coming from side to side, especially for his size. Um, He's a guy that kind of reminds me of Leonard a little bit. I think he's a guy that's definitely going to be a good goaltender in this league. So you definitely, the Flyers have struggled against good young goaltenders in the past. You want to get shots on. This is an advantage for the Flyers not having to face guys that have won the William Jennings in Halak and um, and Tuka Reyes have combined to win the goaltenders of the year. Um, So I think you definitely have an advantage here for the Flyers coming in, unfortunately having Halak uh, get the bout of COVID here. And then, obviously, it seems like he would be out for tomorrow's game, unless if it's a false positive. So you would think that tonight's game at home in the TD Garden for the Boston Bruins would be Dan Vladar, but then are they going to go with Vladar back-to-back, who's still learning the NHL and not experienced yet? Or will they go with Jeremy Swayman, who only has AHL experience, but has been absolutely money since coming into the AHL, but in only nine games this far, so a small sample size. So it'll be interesting to see what they're able to do. I think the Flyers have no excuse not to take at least one of two from the Bruins since it comes to having their young goaltenders. They have a young defense as well. You just got to push the aggressiveness, play them like you played against the Islanders. And I th- minus some of the turnovers that you still got to clean up a little bit. And I think you will be able to take one or two tonight. Raffle was in for um, Oscar Lindblom, and I think that's because A.V. said Lindblom needs rest. He's a guy that's going to need some rest. He's going to get it done, and he's going to give him the rest he needs. You have a back-to-back. I would envision he's definitely going to be in front of the home crowd tomorrow. But you're also putting Raffle in with Knack center, where Tanner Lozinski centering them, which I think is smart and brilliant because you have another veteran with a young center that just came up that's going to be able to really be able to get him going and get him going his best on that line. I think that was a smart move by the coaching staff. So I think the Flyers with the young goaltenders for the Bruins combined with the young defense, the Bruins are obviously the better team than the Flyers right now, but they got holes as well. They're not as good as the top three teams of our division. So I think you got to be able to attack them. you got to be aggressive like you were against the Islanders, and you have no excuse with Yaro Halak out and Tuka Rest just skating unless if he's actually able to bounce back and come in tomorrow to not take one of these two games. I believe in both of the young goaltenders. I think two, two of the guys, Swayman, you got to see a bigger sample size. But Vlado definitely looks like he's able to be able to make it at least as a 1B. And we'll see as it goes on as a starter. But he looks like an NHL goaltender. Swayman looks like he's definitely an AHL goaltender. And we'll see in the future with NHL. So they look like good young cats. But they're still young guys that are inexperienced. Just get shots on net, stay aggressive, and you should be able to take one or two of those games. And there's no excuse not to. 
Uh, when it comes to the New York Islanders, the Flyers looked better against them this year until their last two tilts when they just were not able to get it done against them, obviously. After looking better against them to start the season going 3-0, and and now I think they're 3-2 and this season against them, but got torched 8-3 to at home in the last game against the New York Islanders. They're now playing at the National Veterans Memorial Coliseum in its last year on that game on April 8th this week, uh, which is Thursday at 7 p.m. I think that's going to be a tough game no matter if um, you have Varlamov or you have Sorokin, who I would have to envision it would probably be because the Flyers are really struggling to find a way to solve him, uh, that they would have in net. I don't think the Flyers match up great against the Islanders. They started out a 3-0 and against them this year. And then they just were not able to get done. It started showing that they're a team that they just don't match up against. It showed in the playoffs tenfold, and then it started showing now. So we'll have to see what they're able to do. I did not envision them winning that game. I think they have to take one or two, one of two against Boston with these young goalies in, and then I don't think they're going to win against the Islanders. So that would put our Flyers at um, one and two to start this week, unless if they're able to surprise and come in and take this home and home from Boston, but I just don't see with how they started playing in March. They had a better game against the Islanders. If you can play that, I see them playing, taking one or two, but I don't see Boston you losing a home and home. And the Isles, we don't match up great against. So I see us having one wins in the one win in the first three games of the week. Uh, the Flyers should be able to at least go um, two and five this week, where they should be able to face the same opponent three times this week. If they can play like they did against the Islanders, potentially go three for five this week, which would actually be a good number where two and five ain't so much, um, because you're facing Boston three times. Home and home, I don't think you're going to be able to win both of those. Thursday or Saturday at 2 p.m., Reyes might be back at that point, but it might end up being his first game back. So if you're still able to get a guy peppered in his first game back, um, really get good aggressive shots on that. You might be able to take advantage of him there. He's not as much in the savvy game shape. So I think the Flyers got to be able to do that. They have a chance of taking three of five this week. I think from a conservative, just more realist approach, it's more likely they take two of five this week, just with how the team was playing in March. The only way I see them taking three of five is by beating Boston two out of the three games they play them this week which I think is a hard ass, but something they can do if they play Boston as such. They played the Islanders um, on Saturday, who was a team they don't match up against well, um, and they played them well, but then just ended up losing in the end like it seems to always happen against the Isles. That's what I think will probably happen on Thursday. Even if you play them well, we just can't seem to figure out the Isles. So you got to figure out Boston, who the Flyers also can't figure out, and try to win two or three. I don't think that's likely, but if they can, that's the only way they're going to win three out of five this week. I see it more likely the Flyers taking one of the games against Boston. I think it's one of the home and home, since you're definitely going to have the two young cats in net there that are very good young development goaltenders I mentioned earlier, but guys you can be able to take advantage of them with less NHL experience at this point of their career if their young defense also kind of falters a bit under pressure as well if the Flyers can play like they did and really get into the defense's um, weak zones like they did against the Isles in that game, but then just couldn't score. Um, you then have to be able to play Buffalo. You lost to them 6-1 to one twice. If you don't beat Buffalo this week on the final game to wrap up this week on Sunday the 11th at 2 p.m., that's a disgrace. The Flyers have to start taking advantage of teams that are below them in the standings, teams that are some of the worst teams in the league. If they want to have any chance of making a run to get going and to get back in it and to get the fourth spot ahead of Boston. Obviously, you want to and probably have to take two or three to have a good percent chance of doing that as well against Boston to start this month because you don't play them for the rest of the month. Actually, th th these are the last sets of games against them, uh, actually, to be exact. So you're going to want to take two or three against them. I think that's a hard ask, but the Flyers are going to want to and almost have to do that if they want to have the best chance of catching them. Otherwise, it's going to be all other teams affect their fate um, when it comes to catching Boston and you're going to have to see how other teams are able to beat Boston, and they have no control of their own destiny. So I think the Flyers are more likely to win two out of five this week. One of the games against Boston, one of the three, they're going to lose to the Islanders. Then they beat the Buffalo Sabres and finally bounce back against them. But I think they have to win 
three out of five to be able to have a best chance against the playoffs because that means you would take two out of three against Boston, I think. Who is the fourth place team? You're not going to catch one of the top three teams, and that's the way that you would be able to somehow make this comeback and somehow get in after looking that bleak in March. It's a new month. It's a new age. of Obviously, that's an expression used. Maybe the Flyers can get going in this new age month and actually get moving in the right direction. They always are a team that seem to have a law on the season, so maybe they can get pushing and going here. they got to take three out of five this week. Again, I think it's more likely to get two out of five, but I hope you all enjoyed this weekly recap video for Philadelphia Flyers by far the saddest of the ones I did. Please check out my Phillies. Um, series wrap up of the Brave series and preview to the Mets series if you're a baseball fan as well and my Phantoms weekly uh, recap as well as weekly preview to this week's handful of games as well if you enjoy the Lehigh Valley Phantoms minor leagues to the Philadelphia Flyers as well. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please try to subscribe. I'm trying to get to 1.30 by the end of this week. Your support is greatly appreciated. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Go Flyers anytime, anywhere. Playing baby. And enjoy from the Fire hockey. Tablet. Peace out everybody.